I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. We praise God for each and every one of you this morning. And we're thankful to God for showering down blessings upon each and every one of you, for allowing each you for us to come in and for you to log in to this thy virtual worship experience here at the Shallow Baptist Church Old Site in downtown Fredericksburg, Virginia. We are looking forward, as we do every Sunday, to that which God is about to do through our praise team and how God will speak in and through our pastor to help us to continue along this Christian journey. So whatever may be going on in and around you this morning, or whoever may be trying to steal your joy, I encourage you to block it all out. Tell Satan to get thee behind you. Don't let whatever or whoever is trying to overpower that which God has for you this morning. And so open your spiritual hearts and your minds and let the spirit of the living God to minister to you throughout this worship experience. But before we move throughout into worship, let me remind you of just a few quick announcements. Mother's Day is on next Sunday. So on, on next Saturday, May 8th, at 7 p.m., our women's retreat ministry will host a Mother's Day comedy hour. Registration is still open, and we praise God for the over 100 women who have already registered. And we're praising God for the many more who will continue to register in this upcoming week. So don't let this wonderful opportunity of joy and laughter to pass you by. The flyer has already been emailed, and it's on our Facebook page. So you can log in and register, which registration is closing on next Thursday. And so we originally said it's next Friday, however, so that we can properly plan, we ask and pray that everyone will please register prior to next, next Thursday, May 6th. On the third Sunday of this month of May, May 18, weather permitting, and pastor will come forth and give more information. We will meet at the Fredericksburg Fairgrounds at 10 a.m. to worship outside. And of course, we will be following the CDC regulations. The Shallow Baptist Church Old Site Food Pantry will reopen on Friday, May 7. The days of operation will be the second and the fourth Friday of each month from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. That's May 7th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Our outdoor pantry can be accessed from the glass door in front of the church located on Sophia Street. Please follow the posted signs for specific directions and safety procedures. Beloved, please be reminded that you can still send your tithes and offerings via online, by mail, or you can drop off your tithes to our trustees every Sunday here at the church between the hours of 11.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. every Sunday. Today is first Sunday, so don't forget to prepare your communion elements as pastor will lead us through our communion worship experience immediately following his sermon. This morning, our scripture comes from Isaiah 53, verse 5. From the NIV version, it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Let us look to our Lord in prayer. God, we come to you this morning. God, we thank you for loving on us. God, we thank you for keeping us. God, we thank you for walking with us every step of the way. God, we thank you for this worship experience, for your Holy Spirit resting, ruling, and abiding with us this morning. We thank you this morning, God, for waking us up in our right mind and allowing us to come on this thy service to give you all glory, praise, and honor. God, I ask and pray that you would go and be with your children, whether they are on Zoom, whether they are on YouTube, or whether they are on Facebook. God, you know what your people are in need of this morning. And so, God, I ask and pray that you would allow them to remind, remember that, they, that you would never leave them nor forsake them. God, if they are in need of a financial blessing, God, provide. God, if they are in need of a healing, God, heal them. God, whatever your children are in need of, God, 
If they are in need of a spiritual blessing, God, lay your healing, your spiritual hands, your divine hands upon your people. God, I ask and pray, God, that you would go in the midst of the, every household that is represented here this morning. God, I ask and pray, God, if those, uh, if they are in the hospital, if they are in a nursing home, wherever your people are, God, I ask and pray that you would allow them to feel your divine presence. God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit is with us this morning. Be with this thy praise team. God, I ask and pray that you would stand them up, God. God, I ask and pray that you would use their voices, anoint them from on high, touch their hands, God, as they sing for you this morning, singing the songs of Zion. And then, God, we ask and pray that you would touch the manservant, your son, God, as he stands behind this sacred desk. God, you have already, you have already prepared a sermon through, for your people. And so, God, we ask and pray that you would touch our pastor, your son, this morning. God, use him, God, and anoint him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God, we ask and pray, God, the word that you have already prepared. God, we each and every one need to hear your word this morning. So, God, we ask and pray, God, that you would, God, God, we ask and pray as you use your manservant this morning. God, we ask and pray that whatever he stands in need of, God, God, we ask and pray that you would give it to him, God. But God, in this morning, God, your people need to hear from you. And so, God, hide your manservant behind the cross, God. Allow your people to not see Pastor Dobines, but to see all of you in him this morning. God, you know what he's in need of. You know what Lady G is in need of. You know what the entire Dobines family is in need of. So, God, do it, God. Do it, God, as we know you can do it. God, we ask and pray, God, that you would touch the entire Shallow Baptist Church Old Sight family. God, we need you, God. We need you this morning, God. And so, God, we thank you for all that you're about to do in and through your people. And so, God, we give you glory. We give you honor, not just for the things that you're doing, God, but for who you are in our lives. And so, God, we thank you and we praise you. It is in the most precious, awesome, and matchless name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I got out of my bed, I didn't have any doubt. Because I know what God did for me yesterday, and I know what he did for me today. And I just give him all glory, all honor, and praise. Hallelujah. This morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. Okay. 
love it. Every believer ought to agree that little becomes much when you place it in this man's hands. It becomes a question, if he fed 5,000, he can fix your situation today. If he opened blinded eyes, if he even raised the dead, he can fix your situation. We are here to declare here at the Shallow Baptist Church old site that our God is real. This is not a figment of our imagination. This is not speculation. We know that we know that we know that we know that our God is real. Things have happened. Doors have opened. Ways have been made that could not have happened by mere happenstance. By God and God only were these miracles wrought in our lives. And we're not special. He can do the same thing for you. The question was asked in biblical antiquity, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer comes back in regular refrain. There's nothing, absolutely, positively, nothing too hard for the Lord. Whatever you got going on. And the truth of the matter is, all of us got something going on. But God is bigger than that something. God is bigger than cancer. God is bigger than divorce. God is bigger than bankruptcy. God is bigger than being fired and getting a pink slip. Whatever it is, bless his name. He's able. I'm a witness. We serve an able God. Let me just praise God for having another opportunity to share with you, my brothers and sisters, on this Sunday morning, this Lord's Supper, this, this time of communion and sharing and the good news, and we pray that things will continue to get better and we'll be able to, in the coming days, be able to fellowship together in semblance of what perhaps we did before. Uh, but on uh, the third Sunday in May, hallelujah, on the third Sunday in May at the 10 o'clock hour in the morning at the fairgrounds, brothers and sisters, let us gather as a shallow family and other friends in the area, we invite you to come and share with us as we praise the Lord, yeah, together at the fairground. Amen. Look, 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 you've been to the fairground before, uh, but you ought to have the kind of faith that you can praise the Lord anywhere. Uh, our ancestors as African people praised the Lord without having uh, pews and organs and carpet on the floor. They praised them in brush harbor. They praised them right way out in the field. They, they raised their hand in the air and they praised the Lord even under some arduous conditions. We ought to be able to do the same thing and praise the Lord and fellowship one with the other and properly socially distance and be in a safe way there at the fairgrounds on the third Sunday at the 10 o'clock hour. Amen? Amen. Listen, I, I solicit your prayers for a near and dear friend of mine, the Reverend Dr. Kurt Clark and his family. Pastor Clark is a dear friend, but the other day he and his twin brother, identical twin, Bert Clark, were enjoying themselves riding their motorcycles. And Bert's motorcycle got away from him and ended his life. Kurt has, Kurt has the awesome responsibility of burying his brother, his twin brother, his identical twin brother, and so I pray that you will pray with me for this family in their time of great sorrow. You may not know them. That's irrelevant and immaterial. The point is, there's a child of God, a man of God, who has lost somebody close to him. And the, I knew both of them. I knew Bert well. And my prayers are with his wife and with his children. Amen. On Mother's Day, Weekend, we're looking forward to gathering uh, on uh, um, in the virtual setting at eight o'clock on May eighth. It's from seven p.m. until uh, we will have some Christian comedians. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that. Amen. Uh, last week, uh, the city of Fredericksburg and surrounding areas stopped to uh, celebrate a deserving individual, Amen. Brother Xavier Richardson. He is one of the most giving persons I've ever met. He's, he's like the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps on running and running, and he continues to run 
for other people. Lives have been changed. Lives have been made better. Uh, nearly 8,000 young people uh, have gone through his program, and they have had life-changing situations, some of them first-generation college, and all of these kinds of things where Brother Xavier Richardson had his hand on them. All of us in this area who've had uh, COVID vaccines, many of us can thank him for his efforts to make sure that our community uh, was justly served, and we appreciate him very, very much. So we shout out Brother Xavier Richardson. And while we're at it, shout out Madam Ambassador Pamela Bridgewater Orchid, who spearheaded much of this, along with a whole lot of others. But uh, she thought it not a robbery that the city, this region, uh, this state even, would recognize Brother Xavier Richardson. So our hat is tipped to you, Madam Ambassador. Thank you so much for putting this on your heart and having this done. And what a privilege it is for us to participate in such an event and to know Brother Xavier personally. At the same time, I want to shout out my friend, my mentor, who celebrates 55 years of preaching. And I think Sister Pamela Bridgewater Orchid may know him, and that's Dr. Russell Orchid. Amen. He formerly pastored the uh, New Site Church here in our city. He was on the school board and is in Louisville, Kentucky. Amen. At New Zion Church, and he's been doing a marvelous job there. Uh, he's been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ for 50 and five years. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Reverend Armstead for being our worship leader, Brother N.J. Robinson for uh, operating the AV, and Brother Brock Cobb, and Brothers and Brothers Silver, and we thank God for uh, Sister Donna, Sister Karen, Sister Indy, and Sister Lexi. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for all that you do. A lot goes on behind the scene, and we appreciate that. And I reiterate uh, that on uh, the coming week, the pantry ministry will be uh, restarting, and we look forward to serving our community. Amen. With that done, I want to share a word with you. Comes to us today, comes to us this morning from the Gospel of John. John's Gospel, chapter 15. And I want to read in your hearing verses 1 through 8. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless, unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples the word of God. I want to share with us for the next little while from the subject petition, permission, and purging. Petition, permission, and purging. Jesus, the field preacher of Galilee, went about preaching and teaching the masses with an attempt by his agenda to help change them and raise them from their previous standard. He wanted to raise them. He wanted to raise his rather different 
an unusual congregation, a congregation, really a church without walls. It had all kinds of people in it, people that the church and the synagogue perhaps did not want to be a part of it. But he wanted to raise even those individuals who were babes, if you will, who were immature, who were juvenile in their perspectives. And he wanted to raise them up to new and imminent possibilities of what they could become. He wanted them to come near him and grow and mature so that they would not remain spiritual short people. Jesus had to take the people lovingly and sometimes painstakingly so in order to use them and take them to where he wanted to, them to go. He couldn't rush this. He had to take it very slow. Just as a baby doesn't come into the world eating filet mignon and drinking Dom Perignon, Jesus took his early followers and even his followers today slowly. He started the people. He started the people by eating, drinking milk, if you will. He had to have them on Similac, if you will, because they weren't ready for the strong meat. See, sometimes, you know, if you give a baby something that a baby is not ready for, it will not be able to digest it, will not be able to use it as fuel for spiritual growth. But it's good for a baby to drink milk, but if the baby never begun, begun, goes beyond liquid sustenance, then the growth can become stunted. The problem in the world, the problem in America, the problem in Virginia, the problem in Fredericksburg, and even sometimes in you and in me, is that our growth is not what it needs to be because we are prone uh, to be involved digestively speaking and spiritually immature fashion, we're too prone to stay on milk too long. We might have tea, but we're still drinking milk. We might have some gray hairs, but we're still drinking milk. We're still acting immature as it relates to our walk with the Lord. But the Lord is looking to move us from immaturity to maturity, from, from being negative and, and, and being tribal to having a mindset that through the Lord we can grow in order to make him pleased. But for us to grow, for us to become mature, more like Jesus, we must move from milk to meat. If we're going to be what Jesus wants us to be, we can't stay on milk, brothers and sisters. we got to move from Similac to steak. That is, if we want to grow. Growth is not, growth is not accidental. Growth is intentional. Some people don't want to grow. And just because they don't want to grow, guess what? They don't. In our text last week, Jesus shared with us that the sheep need a shepherd. And in this text today, the Lord moves from sheep and shepherd to vine and branches and to vine grower as well. But in both cases, the emphasis is on the need for a symbiosis, a coming together for maximum growth for the people of God. The people must stay close to God. One of the reasons that we become immature, one of the reasons we stray away and go into the far country, if you will, is because we leave the Father's house. And we start wanting to do our own thing. Last week we discovered that the sheep could not survive. They couldn't make it. They could not thrive without the shepherd. Today we draw the same conclusion. That the branches which represent us cannot grow properly cannot reach full and maximum potential unless the branch stays connected with the true vine. And the true vine is Jesus. And Jesus says right off the bat that I am the true vine. And the Father and I are working this thing together. We are in tandem. We are in partnership that the branches can produce fruit, namely grapes for the purpose of wine making, literally in the text, and in order for the grapes to reach their optimum potential, the vine grower must take hedge clippers. The vine grower must take other instruments and accoutrements for pruning as to remove certain undesirable traits which can stunt the growth process, thus limiting the grapes from attaining proper maturity. Pruning, removal, 
Reevaluation is not punishment. When the Lord is pruning you, he's preparing you. When the Lord is removing certain things and sometimes certain people, the Lord is allowing us to chart a different course. Can I say it like I feel it? There are some people in your circle that you need to let go. Because every time you come around them with a great idea, every time you're around them, they just spew out negativity. It can't be done. We've never done it that way before. But the child of God recognizes that the spirit of God can move you to serve this present age. And that old ways of doing things. You don't wear bell-bottom pants now. They're not back in style, are they? You, you don't walk around with the same clothing that you had on when you were trying to imitate the people on Soul Train. You don't have the afro out to here. Well, you don't even have an afro. It's just a, well, anyway. The point I'm trying to make is that when the Lord is pruning us, when the Lord is looking at us and reevaluating us, is not punishment. The Lord is pruning us because it is necessary for growth. If true growth, real growth, is to take place, we cannot remain spiritual pygmies. But the Lord wants us to grow up. And what a word for some of us in the church even. Some of us just need to grow up. Amen. If you don't prune, if you don't cut off, if you don't cut back, if you don't remove certain hindrances, it will greatly limit the possibility of healthy growth. Thus, brothers and sisters, it will lead to arrested development. Growing, growing can be difficult. Hence the statement, growing pains. Growing pains don't compare to the pain that is attached with immaturity. If you want to really feel some pains, just stay a babe in Christ. If you want to be uh, in a place of immaturity, it will mean that you will not move from milk to meat, but you'll stay on milk and still be childish and childlike when the Lord wants to grow you up. The Lord wants you to move from being a person who has myopic vision that only includes persons who look like you, who act like you, walk and talk like you. And I imagine where this country could be. I'm a great historian of our history here in America and beyond. What if, dream with me just for a moment, moment if the European settlers had truly befriended Native Americans and said, let's work this thing out together rather than seeking to exterminate them and squash them like bugs on a car windshield? What if European settlers had partnered with our African ancestors and offered them mutuality of building together? What if we were less tribal, less territorial in the church? This is my thing. This is my area. and I don't want anybody else to bother. Well, child, let me help you today. It doesn't belong to you. Listen, if you don't believe me, believe Beyonce. She said, I got another one over there. To the left, to the left. I got your replacement. I got sense enough to know, brothers and sisters, that God has already picked out the 11th pastor of this church. And it's my job to do everything in my, in my power to make it better for her or him. Listen, you are not the end all be all. It will not stop when you close your eyes. It will continue to go on and it will continue to move on and perhaps it will move on better because God is using whoever makes themselves available. Can I say it like I feel it? If one won't, another one will. We need to become less tribal. We need to become less territorial in the church. And we need to have a welcoming spirit in the church of the living God. We need to welcome people we may not like. We need to welcome people we may not understand. But listen, praise God, the litmus test for being a child of God is not perfection. That was your place to shout. Let me say that again for the people in the back. The litmus test for being a child of God is not perfection. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here right now. And the litmus test for God and walking with God and, and being on God's side is not prote per protection, I mean perfection. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here as well. Other people should not be deemed as less than because they love differently than you. The black church has missed out on a great opportunity because for too long, 
we push women to the background. We wouldn't be who we are and where we are in the church or otherwise had it not been for Mud now. We can't put people in categories of being less than. See, we often prune. We prune, but we prune the wrong thing. We dare to prune people who don't look like us. We, we dare to prune people who think differently than we think. But the Church of Jesus Christ is not a social club. It is not a fraternity. It is not your sorority. The Church of the Living God is a place for all people. And when we attempt to play the role of God, we often prune the fruit that God wants to keep, and we cultivate weeds. Jesus is very clear, most emphatic about the fact that we need to stay with him because he is the one who makes it possible for the fruit to be born in our lives. Every gift we have has come from the Lord. If we have anything, the Lord gave it to us. If the Lord gave it to us, we have no room to boast of ourselves. If God gave it to you, give him the praise for the gift. And I've seen it happen, brothers and sisters, folk who had great talent and abilities, but they started uh, uh, praising themselves, and God took the gift and them away. God wants to remind us, I appreciate you, I like you, you're all right with me, but don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. If you have been blessed, and we all have been, don't be so naive to think that it was because of your goodness. On our best day, Paul, the tent maker from Tarsus, says it is as a filthy rag. See, the Lord allows it to rain, allows it to rain on the just as well as the unjust. Praise the Lord. I know I'm not deserving of his rain. I'm just glad that the Lord can find some use, something he can put forth for the cause of the kingdom with my life and the way my life is. In verse 4, the master says to us, don't get it twisted. I can use anyone. I can use anybody that I choose. But the master declares, without me, you can do nothing. Lord, have mercy. What a word for Aaron Dobines. What a word for you today. What a word for some of us who are smelling our own selves as the old people would declare that the Lord reminds us that I can do it with you or I can do it without you. The Lord declares that I am, I am the reason for all of your success. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. The Lord wants you on his side. The Lord desires you uh, to be on his team. But if you think that the Lord can't do what he wants to do without you, you got another thought coming. You are me, then we need to, we are badly mistaken if we think the ship can't go on without us. Just ask Jonah. Even when we're thrown overboard, the ship keeps moving. In verse 6, the master, in a reiteration, says, without me, you can do nothing. He had just said it, but he reminds us, because I believe this verse is for me sometimes, stop bragging on your step. Stop thumping your chest like you're all of that in a bag of chips. The Lord wants to remind us, you're all right. But he also reminds us, I can do it with or without you. The Lord desires that we bear fruit, brothers and sisters. What is your fruit looking like these days? The Lord wants you to bear fruit for the kingdom. And the kingdom is bigger than any one man or any one woman. When you bear fruit, yes, you should benefit. But the fruit is not sing singularly for your consumption. When you bear fruit, the fruit is not just for you. The fruit is not for hoarding. To put it in a bank and a bank of fruit just for you is not about how much fruit you have, listen, but it's how much fruit that you share with others. It's not about your gift, but how much of your gift do you share with somebody else? One of the reasons I love teaching school at the seminary and working with young preachers is because People have helped me to get to where I am. And the little bit that I got, I want to try to impart it to someone else like somebody imparted knowledge unto me. And if I can be of help to somebody, I want to be of help to somebody and not a hindrance. So the Lord doesn't need me, but I'm just glad he decides to use me in spite of me. The Lord doesn't need you, but the Lord includes us not because of, but 
rather in spite of us. I'm glad that perfection again is not the standard. I'm glad that he uses folk with a few problems. I'm glad that he does not throw us away when our problems become public. Lord have mercy. I'm glad God is not like most Baptists. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we are right if it's in the corner, but if a problem comes out when we ought to restore a brother or a sister, we mow them down like grass in the springtime rather than trying to lift them up. Listen, brothers and sisters, can I make a confession? By now you ought to know it. I know it about you. And that is, I haven't dotted every I, nor have I crossed every T, but neither have you. I have not dotted every I and crossed every T, but again, let me admit it for you, neither have you. But the master says, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. And he will use you even with your brokenness. Bless his holy name. He will use you with your imperfections, even with your past indiscretions. Praise his holy name. The writer was right when they wrote, just as I am, without one plea. But thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me to come, O Lamb of God, I come. I come, brothers and sisters. What about you? I come with a limp. I come as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. I come meek and lowly. I come with weeds and thickets, desperate, needly, and needing to be pruned. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I want to be more and more like him. I want to be used by him. I want to be used with the little time I got left. And whatever time I got left, I want the Lord to use me. I don't want more titles. I don't need another position. I just want to serve him more because I have more years behind me than I have in front of me. And when you come to this realization, you ought not to act like you're a child. The writer says to us that when I was a child, I, I acted like a child. But when I became a grown person, I put away childish things. But some folk get old, but they don't mature. I don't want to waste the time that I have left with immature agendas. I don't want to waste the time I got with childish, cliquish kinds of things and games. I just want to be more and more like him. So I tell the Lord, Lord, you got my full permission. You don't need my permission, but I want you to know you got my permission to use me and do what you have to do with me and to me even so that I could be more of use to you and the kingdom. I'm begging you, Lord. I'm petitioning you to prune me. This ain't for nobody else. Prune Aaron. And I hope you can say the same thing about your life. Prune me, Lord, for my desire is to be more pleasing in your sight. We say prune them because we recognize they need pruning, but not only they need pruning, we need pruning, and you need pruning. We ought to say, Lord, prune me. We ought to say, Lord, search me. Search me, Lord. Not if you find anything like sin, but when you find anything that shouldn't be. Take it out and straighten me. Because I want to be more pleasing in your sight. I know that when we seek a closer walk, brothers and sisters, with the Lord, some won't understand. When we seek a closer walk with the Lord, some will wonder what's going on with you. But if the Lord is pleased, then you have to learn to let other folks stay in their place. And you have to be able to say to the Lord, if the Lord won't help me, I can't stand this storm. But if the Lord is on your side, uh, ain't no storm that'll come that can blow your way. Winds may blow, the winds may howl, but if the Lord's got you in the hollow of his hand, the Lord will make a way. Won't he do it? Somehow. You got to be able, brothers and sisters, to say to the Lord, yeah, have your way, Lord. I'm not much. I mean, I look like much. But whatever I am, I'm yours. Because you are the potter. And I am the clay. And my desire, Lord, is for you to mold me. Make me and shape me into what you want me to be. Lord, help me 
to get over myself. Help me to put you in first place. Help me to get out of the driver's seat and ride shotgun with you and tell you, Lord, any way you bless me, any way you, anywhere you take me, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will be satisfied. We need to petition the Lord. We need to beg the Lord, implore the Lord, say to the Lord, have your way. Whatever I got, you gave it to me. Whatever I am, you made it so. It is you that have made me and not me myself. We ought to say, Lord, grant your will be done. Have your way. Let us say like Jesus. I got a certain way. I want things to go. But ultimately, I trust you. Ultimately, your track record is good with me. And I say, Lord, not my will. Not my will, not Dobine's will, not the people's will, but your will be done. You then ought to urge the Lord. Say, Lord, purge me. I got some things that I need to get out of me. I got some spiritual impurities in me. I want you to take them out of me so I can serve you better. The reason we want to do this is because the master closes his text. Yeah, around verse 8, it says, so that we might bear more fruit. But we ought not to want to bear just any fruit. We ought to want to bear the fruit that Paul talked about in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Lord, help me to, to bear the fruit of love. Lord, help me to bear the fruit of joy. Help me, Lord, to bear the fruit of peace. Help me, Lord to bear the fruit of forbearance. Help me, Lord, to bear the fruit of kindness. Help me, Lord, to have the fruit of goodness. Help me, Lord, to have the fruit of faithfulness. Help me, Lord, to have a gentle spirit. Help me, Lord, to have self-control. Is there anybody here today that can declare, Lord, urge me, and I urge you to ask the Lord to have your way, Lord, Use me in a way you want. Do with me whatever you want. It is my petition, Lord. Take Aaron out of the picture and use me like you want to. Lord, I give you permission to have your way with everything and everybody in my life. Lord, purge me, clean me, use me to your glory. Hallelujah. If you don't mean it, don't ask the Lord to do it. You know what I discovered the Lord is able to do? Sometimes when you've been praying to the Lord for promotion, he'll take you down before he raise you up. Do I have a witness? Sometimes you have to go through hell and back with some of the same people you tried to love on. But the Lord might be seemingly demoting you, but setting you up for a promotion. Is there anybody here today that can declare, Lord, have your way? You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me. Make me after your will. While I'm waiting, yielding and still. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way with my family. Have your way with my wife. Have your way with my children. Have your way with shallow old sight. Have your way. Have your way. Yes. Have your way, Lord. I petition you, Lord. I seek permission, Lord, from you to follow your will and your way. And I ask, oh God, that you would purge me. Purge me with hyssop. Make me whiter than snow. The purging process can sometimes be painful. Sometimes the purging process can appear like you're going down and losing, but the Lord is setting you up. Somebody I'm talking to, I don't know who it is I'm talking to, but the Lord is setting you up. You've been to hell and back. You've been going through, but the Lord is saying, I got you. I got you. Sometimes the Lord wants to shake some people out 
of your life because they're dead weight. Or it might be that they're not ready for the journey that the Lord is ready to take you on. Maybe you'll join up with them later. Maybe they'll mature to the place, yes, of wanting to please the Lord more than they want to please people. The Lord is saying to you, my brothers and my sisters, time is out for playing church. Time is out uh, for clicks and, and game playing. It's time to get right church. And let's go home. It's now time as we invite you to give your life to the Lord. The door of the church stands open. We want to encourage you to get right with the Lord. But sometimes, in order to get right with the Lord, you have to get right with your sister or your brother. If we were here pre-pandemic, we might be reading uh, from the covenant. It talks about we don't just let things fester. We don't just let things go try to patch it up, try to fix it, because you don't know whether you're going to be here the next five minutes. So you don't want to go into eternity or have it done what the Lord was pressing on your heart and urging you to do. The door is open. If you desire to be a member of this church or any church, there's a number on that screen you can call. They can help you. They can pray with you your desires might be. You become a member of this church or the body of Christ or you just want to have somebody to talk to in these pandemic times. As a mature believer on the other end of that line, call them and tell them what you want. We've done as the Lord has asked and still there's room at the cross for you and you and yes, even you. Here at the Shallow Baptist Church Old Site, first Sunday we normally observe Holy Communion past year, we've had to do it virtually. And our prayer is that soon we'll be able to do it in person. The question would be, what have you learned about yourself in this time of pandemic? Besides watching CNN or Fox News, bless your heart. Uh, maybe you've been listening to Tim Scott, bless your heart. Let me pray for you right now. Uh, but uh, what have you learned? If you go through the pandemic and come out the same way you went in. Something's wrong with you. That's like going through school and not learning anything. You ought to learn something, have learned something more about you. And you ought to, from that, desire to have a closer walk with him. In doing so, we want to imitate him, and that's what we do when we have communion. Jesus gathered with his disciples, all 12 of them, in the upper room, he gathered with them. They were celebrating the Passover, remembering how Jehovah, Yahweh, God Almighty, delivered Moses and the children of Israel out of the hands of Pharaoh. See, that's what you got to do. Sometimes we have to have a Sankofa moment. Sankofa is an African word that says we go back in order to go forward. So sometimes we have to go back to the old landmark. Sometimes we have to go back to the table and be there with Jesus and the disciples. Because if you're a follower of Christ, you are a disciple as well. He gathered there and he said, the bread represents my body. He said to them, take and eat it. He said, the cup represents my precious shed blood. Drink ye all of it. You see, to be a Christian, a real Christian, child of God, you know that there's, there's no cross, there's no crown. Stop being an immature believer and thinking that everything has to be well all the time. Again, I say God can sometimes teach better lessons at night than he can in the sunshine. So sometimes when you're going through, just say, Lord, I don't always understand what you're doing, but I trust you. I trust you because you have a impeccable track record and you're worthy of being trusted. We've done as the Lord has asked. And still there's room at the cross for you and you and you and yes you. Thank you for tuning in this Sunday morning with the Shallow Baptist Church Old Site. We pray that you will have a great week in the Lord. Let us receive now the benediction.
now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. And all the people said,